I'm a public health researcher, and influenza is my field of study. Often, it's not perceived as a deadly disease, but it could be catastrophic. In 1918, at the end of the First World War, a global killer emerged, causing an estimated 40 to 50 million deaths. This was the global influenza pandemic called Spanish flu, because it was thought to have started in Spain and then spread throughout the world. Influenza is highly infectious, spreading rapidly from person to person. When infected people cough or sneeze, droplets containing the virus land on surfaces and make contact with other people who may then become infected. From 1918 to 1920, the world had to face this pandemic with limited public health means at the time. There were other influenza pandemics over the course of the 20th and early 21st centuries. The threat of the next pandemic looms large. In April 2009, a new influenza virus surfaced in Mexico, although experts had predicted that if an influenza pandemic should emerge, it would be from Asia. Despite advances in scientific understanding of influenza viruses, they constantly evolve and mutate. It is still unknown where and when the next pandemic will strike and which virus will be responsible. This virus in Mexico was identified as a strain of type A influenza of subtype H1N1, the same subtype as the Spanish flu virus, 90 years earlier. It was most likely transmitted initially from pigs to humans and then spread from humans to humans around the world. One and a half years later, the World Health Organization declared this H1N1 pandemic over, but its emergence made it clear that an influenza pandemic can start anytime and anywhere in the world. This H1N1 virus claimed around 200,000 human lives, many of whom were young people and individuals belonging to previously unrecognized risk groups. Influenza is a very important public health problem. It affects millions of people every year and causes a lot of illness, a lot of hospitalizations, and a large number of deaths globally. Apart from the risk of a pandemic, seasonal influenza epidemics <laughs> represent a year-round disease burden, especially during cold seasons in the northern and southern hemispheres, and all year round in tropical areas. It is estimated that seasonal epidemics cause three to five million cases of severe illnesses and about 250,000 to half a million deaths every year. Alors, sur les pics vraiment d'épidémie, c'est vrai qu'il y a des, des journées où on constate vraiment que, que c'est une demande fréquente au, au comptoir. Euh, ça peut être, oui, des fois un patient sur trois qui se manifeste des syndromes grippaux. Euh, ça peut être euh, des fois très tôt dans la saison, en novembre-décembre. Après, des fois, il n'y a pas de grippe euh, de toute la saison et ça va arriver en février-mars. Ça dépend vraiment des années. To limit the spread of this virus, everyone should cover their mouth and nose when coughing or sneezing and should practice good hand hygiene. Influenza indeed spreads mainly through airborne transmission, which is the fastest route of transmission for a disease. Every time a human infected with the virus coughs or sneezes, tens of thousands of tiny droplets are released into the environment. Even a very small droplet may contain hundreds of viruses. Droplets can enter the body of another person through their mouth or nose and contact with this person's respiratory mucous membranes. protein on the surface of the virus can bind to a receptor molecule on the surface of a healthy cell. Once the virus has attached itself to the cell, it will enter within seconds. It proceeds to take control of the cell, producing thousands of copies of itself. The cell, exhausted by this takeover, becomes very weak and ultimately dies. New viruses are released, infecting neighboring cells or returning to the infected person's airways. With cells being destroyed, inflammation occurs and mucous membranes are weakened. This opens the door for other pathogens like bacteria to enter the body and cause infections, including pneumonia, which can be fatal. When tissues are inflamed, this prompts the infected person to cough or sneeze. 
Huge quantities of the virus are therefore released back into the environment to potentially infect people nearby, and ultimately extending the spread of the virus. The main symptoms of influenza are high fever, cough, headache, muscle and joint pain, severe malaise, sore throat, and runny nose. For most healthy individuals, these symptoms usually disappear within one or two weeks without requiring medical attention. Scientists are still trying to understand why some infected individuals have mild and other severe or even fatal disease. There are three types of influenza viruses, A, B, and C, and they evolve continuously in nature. I have to organize my research along the lines of these types. Influenza A and B cause annual epidemics, known as seasonal influenza, and type C infections cause a milder version of influenza, which does not cause epidemics. Type A influenza viruses are classified into subtypes, such as H1N1, H3N2, H5N1, or H7N9. The letters and numbers that make up the subtype names are based on the hemagglutinin, H, and the neuraminidase, N, proteins, which look like spikes on the surface of the virus. Numbers added after the letters H and N indicate in which order these proteins were discovered. There are indeed continuous changes in the H and N proteins. Any change results in a different virus. For instance, although the 1918 and 2009 pandemics were caused by viruses belonging to the same H1N1 subtype, they are very different viruses. While influenza B viruses appear to affect only humans, influenza A viruses circulate in both humans and animals. This type A has been found in many different animals, from waterfowl to domestic birds, horses, pigs, and occasionally wild aquatic mammals such as seals and whales. While influenza viruses are particularly prevalent among aquatic birds, when they infect domestic chickens and turkeys, the fatality rate can be higher than 50%. Type A influenza viruses can cross species barriers, from birds to pigs, for instance. This capacity allows them to infect humans, and it is how pandemics can start, fortunately on very rare instances. Right now in humans, only two subtypes of influenza A viruses are circulating and cause seasonal influenza epidemics. Transmission from animal reservoirs to humans could be direct or indirect. In the latter case, a first direct transmission happens between one animal reservoir to another, for instance in pigs, in which an adaptation of the virus happens before infecting humans. A third way of transmission is through genetic reassortment. The genetic information of influenza viruses is written on eight separate gene segments. Genetic reassortment may happen when two different subtypes of influenza enter a body at the same time. They may replicate simultaneously within a single cell, and this may create a new virus containing gene segments from both parent viruses. In 1957, a reassortment between a human influenza virus and an avian influenza virus resulted in a pandemic which killed about 2 million people worldwide. No other type of virus or pathogen evolves as rapidly as influenza. This, alongside its ability to jump across species, shows how challenging it is to predict where the next pandemic will come from, how it will spread, and how hazardous it might be. Because newer influenza viruses are most often different from those that circulated in previous years, people who had influenza or were vaccinated a year ago may not be protected from infection with the current year's circulating viruses. Seasonal influenza can cause severe illnesses or even death in people at high risk, including the elderly, pregnant women, children under five years old, 
and individuals with specific chronic medical conditions. These vulnerable groups should get vaccinated every year. The summary of the GMT from uh, uh, from the uh, I learned that the World Health Organization carries out global surveillance of influenza throughout the year, calling on thousands of scientists worldwide. They regularly exchange the updates they have discovered, and representatives meet at least twice a year to determine which viruses might represent the major threat in the next influenza season. There are two key objectives of the work that the Global Surveillance Network does. One is to monitor changes among uh, the viruses causing influenza from year to year in relation to compositions of the vaccine. The other is to detect as early as possible any novel viruses that may appear, some of which may have the potential to spark a pandemic. When I met these scientists in 2015, they were focusing their attention on one specific novel virus of subtype H7 and 9, an avian influenza. People were infected with this virus through exposure to poultry, and most patients had become severely ill. However, the H7 and 9 does not cause disease in poultry. No sustained human-to-human transmission of this H7 and 9 had been detected so far. In rare cases, when an animal virus acquires the ability of sustained human-to-human transmission, it could be the start of a pandemic. The potentially devastating effects of influenza for both animal and human health means it requires the attention of both veterinary experts and human health professionals. As seen already in the past, influenza pandemics could have dramatic health, social, and economic impacts around the world. One of WHO's very important functions is uh, working with countries and capacity building uh, to improve surveillance in countries where they, they really don't know what's going on with respect to influenza. More than 110 countries have a surveillance system that collects influenza viruses from clinical specimens for detailed analysis and epidemiological information. For instance, in 2009, over the course of 10 months, 1.7 million specimens were analyzed in laboratories around the world. Antiviral drugs for influenza are available in some countries for patient treatment to reduce severe complications. However, vaccination is the most effective intervention to reduce the mortality and morbidity of influenza. And it's the best way to protect people against the persisting and unpredictable threat of this disease. To be prepared, concerted efforts from all public health professionals remain crucial to match the dimensions of this global public health threat. Can I push? I can push. Yeah.